Um, good morning. Um, I would like to start, yesterday it was the preview, I would like to start with a bit of promotion. Um, or, yeah, it will be kind of promotion. Uh, walking uh, uh, to the venue here, um, someone gave me a, leaf a leaflet, which is not the first time, first time in Malmo, but uh, visiting other cities. How do you view the Bible? Um, I'm sure if you travel around the city, you will find one in your hand. Um, so the exhibition dealing with uh, religion and the contemporary um, uh, everyday life. This was quite funny because uh, one of the things that we uh, noticed or we told that um, uh, Sweden is the most secular um, country in Europe. Um, now I will start my talk. Good morning. Uh, I would like to start with uh, something that also related to um, uh, Sweden, um, but it happened 10 years ago in 2005. I would like to start with the beginning of the speech of uh, Herod Painter uh, when he got the Nobel Prize, and from there I will uh, continue. So I did just to press... Yeah. I'm very sorry that I can't be in Stockholm. In 1958, I wrote the following. There are no hard distinctions between what is real and what is unreal, nor between what is true and what is false. A thing is not necessarily either true or false. It can be both true and false. I believe that these assertions still make sense and do still apply to the exploration of reality through art. So, as a writer, I stand by them. But as a citizen, I cannot. As a citizen, I must ask, what is true? What is false? Truth in drama is forever um, sorry, I cut it here. I recommend to hear it until the end. It's a brilliant speech. Um, he all died um, two years after when he uh, giving the speech. He already suffered from cancer in his throat. This is why it's hard sometimes to understand what he's saying. I would like to start again. I will go back to uh, Stockholm. A few years ago, a couple of years ago, uh, Nina Muntman invited me to a conference in uh, Moderna Musik. It's called uh, Scandalous. And she invited me later on to write a text. And the text that I offered dealt with the uh, curatorial ethic in a uh, conflict zone, uh, which helped me a lot um, to articulate uh, my position working at this time in Israel. And I would like to start from this point. I think the scandal I will recommend to read the scandalous book. I think it was like... Um, see the time, I think, or before the time, and now we can read it again, like I think it published last year, 2014, the conference, 13. Um, and I think it was just published, 14, yes. It's <laughs> uh, published in 2014, and I think it's um, so, super relevant and will be more relevant in the coming years. So I very much, and Nina, thank you very much that you helped me to articulate also my position. I left Israel in uh, 2010, um, and I invite here, I think also in related, related to this text and my work over there, uh, to talk about conflict. Um, or curatorial art and conflict zone. Um, it will be hard for me today to talk about theory and to put the border between conflict or a war. Uh, the situation right now in Jerusalem in the past months or the past two weeks, it's escalating. Um, the status quo, I will start with the status quo. Um, what we see here is we see uh, a ladder 
you can read the, the history a bit about, uh, about the status quo in, the, uh, in Jerusalem, but this, this letter was put by one of the uh, monks in the uh, seven uh, churches in Jerusalem when they start to fight among them in the compound and the monk couldn't go out. So to go out, one of them just put a letter to jump out of the, of, of the building. Um, it's, it's quite known, the, the letter is still there for years to remind this moment on conflict in between them. Um, the USA Department uh, claimed that the Temple Mount st uh, status, status quo was violent, violated. Um, it's very interesting to talk about the status quo. Uh, Jerusalem, I don't have a map, but I believe that many of the of you know that uh, the Jerusalem, the old city, you have the uh, uh, Muslim quarter, the Jewish quarter, the Armenian quarter, and the Christian quarter. And we um, need to believe that all of them living in peace together, and this is the model for the future of uh, multi-ethnic or religious uh, together. Um, the status quo means that there are uh, checkpoints everywhere, and mainly um, uh, Palestinian or non-Jew, it's not only Palestinian, checked everywhere. This is the status quo. So the status quo means that you have every other corner cameras or someone or a soldier that check you. Um, again, about the uh, status quo. Uh, I will jump um, two months before I will jump to... Um, end of August. This, oh, sorry. Ah, yes. Ah, okay, sorry. Thank you. Um, this uh, project took place in uh, August um, 25th, uh, this year, under the mountain. Um, escalation in East Jerusalem already started around the Dome of the Rock, um, or Al-Aqsa Mosque. Uh, a project is initiated by the, uh, the city of Jerusalem. Uh, the curator and the people have a lot of good intention. Good intention to bring people, to talk about the situation, uh, to see, to meet the reality. Uh, many Israelis are not uh, entering uh, to the old city anymore. Uh, they're afraid or... They find it, yeah, they're afraid, I think, mainly. So they thought to promote tourism and mainly local tourism in the old city. Uh, this is not the first time that this festival is taking place. It's, I think, the fourth or the fifth. So many projects took place in this public art festival. I will just run uh, quickly uh, to the different projects. Some of them um, contemporary, some of them reenactment of uh, other projects. This is a Capro uh, reenactment building a wall of eyes. There is not enough wall, so we need another one. Sorry. Those are images from the Facebook of the event. No Arab, I would say. No Muslims. There is one image that shows how the old city is controlled. So every corner, which I don't think it's unique anymore to the old city, but every corner controls. So the soldiers are sitting uh, inside the old city and watching any kind of behavior. This is inside the city. This is the wall. And this is the reality of some others. This is the reality of uh, many of the Palestinians. Um, I was in, I was in uh, Israel this summer. I didn't stay till the 25th of August. I left before, so I couldn't see the festival. But I was in Ramallah and I was in Bet Sakhur. And I talked with some people um, in East Jerusalem that are running an institute like Al Mamal and uh, other institutes. And I asked them what they think about this project because for them it's also a way 
to use the public space, but they say, we can't. We can't use this public space. Every time that we try to do something, yes, the police or the border police, we need to get um, permission, like everywhere else. You need to get a permission. So the festival that's running by the city of Jerusalem, it's meant for Jew and not for Palestinian. Even they invite a certain kind of scholar, Palestinian scholar, to talk in the festival. It's the audience are not Palestinians, are not coming. Um, I will talk later on about the reaction. This is from this morning. This is how the reality is right now. This is in Nablus, it's not in Jerusalem. Um, it's the, the project under the mountain um, bring many questions. In one hand, I will say that art, you know, if we want, it's, it's, a, it's a say that I used to, or I'm using quite a lot, if we want to know about our reality, we can, you know, we can look at reality, but we can look also to art. We can look what artists are doing to see how the future will look like to sense how they perceive reality. So in this sense, I think this project was just before the escalation that we see now, or it was in parallel. This is in hand, one hand, it's important to do those kind of project. Yes, I'm not sure. I'm not um, going to judge this project to say if it's right to do a project in this kind of situation or not. But I think for sure it uh, brings a lot of ethical questions. On one hand, people confront with what they are not confront every day, especially if we talk about people that are living in Tel Aviv or other city which is outside of Jerusalem. This is in one hand. On the other hand, other people that are living then don't have an access to the places of the festival or other places in the city. So what does it mean that you have, that you are privileged and you use your privileged position to use the space that it's under conflict and other don't have an access to? I, I leave it as an open question. Um, I'm not sure it's open, but I, I think um, working in a conflict zone or maybe now we can talk about a war, or maybe something which is harsher. In the past few days, what we can see in Jerusalem, it's not a group, um, it's not a military, uh, it's not Palestinian with guns, it's youth going with knives, and the, the feeling that those young people want to die. They want to suicide. They don't want to live anymore. They're living under depression. They're going outside with a knife because they want to be caught. They want to be shot. They can't live anymore under this situation. Thank you very much.